The River Thames allowed London to prosper, but it also splits the city in half. Its bridges deal with an awful lot of traffic. 40,000 people a day travel over Tower Bridge alone, unaware of the marvels hidden inside it. There's more to this bridge than meets the eye. It's not made of stone, but metal. The granite on the outside is just a cladding that conceals 12,000 tons of steel, the backbone that holds up this bridge. Its massive weight rests on two concrete piers buried nearly 30 feet deep into the London clay. They are hollow, and built into them is the intricate mechanism that can lift the bridge deck in 90 seconds. Tower Bridge was the last great crossing built in East London. There's no other bridge for over 18 miles. A big problem for this fast growing part of the city. So now engineers are building this, a cable car over the river. There are urban uh, cable cars elsewhere in the world, but this is the first one in the UK. It's an outstanding piece of engineering. We've got some really big pieces of equipment that we're using that we don't normally get to use. I think there's definitely a, uh, an element of big boys' toys. Uh, engineers always like um, big machinery. This is the LR11350. It's the largest crawler crane in, in the, uh, the UK. It arrived on site on 70 different articulated lorries. It took three cranes to build it, and it took them the best part of two and a half weeks. This track alone weighs 72 tonnes, and to give you an idea of the scale, you can see the size of it. Today, this monster crane will lift the final sections of a main tower into place. A delicate operation. Now, the first of the years is being lifted up. The large crane that's going to be lifted is over here, and it's, you can see it's starting to slew round, taking the load out over the river up onto the top of the, the tower. The crane stretches close to its limit to reach the tower. The driver is so far away, he's almost working blind. This is the, the trickiest part of actually getting it into position. Obviously, you, you can't get out around it, so the guys have got to rely on George's expertise in positioning the crane. The bolt holes have to line up perfectly. There's no tolerance on the holes. It's got to be millimetre perfect before they can land it. The erectors will actually guide him in and talk him in, because whilst he can see it, he's not close enough to be able to see how close. They're obviously telling him where it is and how much to jib up. George hits the target perfectly. Now the crew can finally bolt the section to the tower. 